Welcome to our lecture online. As we hinted in the previous video, there are situations where we can use virtual work when the particle or the truss, whatever we're considering, is at equilibrium and when the system is not at equilibrium. So, with other words, there are two situations where the concept of virtual work can be applied. It's probably most useful when we have a situation where things are at equilibrium. So, the first case we're going to consider when the particle is at the equilibrium, which means that the net force acting on the particle must be equal to zero, and if there's no net force, then there's no acceleration. So the m times a term in Newton's second law must also equal zero. Which means that if we add up all the forces acting on a particle or acting on a particular point in the truss, we can assume, or in the system, whatever system we may be looking at, we can assume that if we add up all the forces, they should add up to zero, and therefore we can say that the virtual work done, the delta W, is equal to the sum of all the forces multiplied by a small imaginary distance that we're going to allow the particle or the system to move through. So in other words, if we do a dot product between the imaginary displacement and each of the forces acting on the particle, when we sum them all up, that should equal zero, which means that the virtual work is equal to zero when the particle is at equilibrium. But we can have situations where the particle is not at equilibrium. So the net force is not equal to zero, and therefore there will be an acceleration. F net is equal to the mass of the particle times the acceleration. But now we can also say that the virtual work can also be equal to zero if we look at it this way. The virtual work can now be defined as being equal to delta W, which is equal to the sum of all the forces acting on the particle times the small imaginary virtual distance of displacement, delta U, minus this term, M times A, times the small imaginary displacement as well. Now that makes sense because if the total net force is equal to m times a, and this of course represents the net force, then of course if I move the m a to the left side of the equation, I end up with f net minus m a is equal to zero. In other words, what's inside the parentheses here must be equal to zero because this is the net force minus the mass times acceleration of the particle. And then if we take that and multiply that via the dot product times a small imaginary displacement. This then represents virtual work and this should then also equal zero because this term will equal zero. But in other words, it acts like it's a net force equal to zero. When we subtract from that, that ma term. Now, what do we call that ma term? That ma term is called the inertial force. So we turn it into a force we subtract it from the sum of all the other forces acting on the particle, and then the virtual work again can be defined as this times dot delta u, which also will equal zero. So in both cases, the, the virtual work will equal zero, but when the particle is not at equilibrium, we have to take into account this what we call inertial, inertial force portion. And that's how it's done.